himself. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked so much about the game, but it's time to find out what's really going to happen in this grand final. PSG LGD versus OG Grand Finals Game 1. Best of five, we kick it off with game one. OG battling all the way through the upper bracket, defying all odds and all predictions as they awaited their opponent. And it's none other than a rematch against PSG LGD. The draft for the first game going underway. And we'll find out what have these two teams prepared both against each other and for all of us to see. Normally, normally. Game number one, OG, as we've been taking a look at their booth, they've just seemed like themselves as they have every other game. Perhaps a little bit more nervous, but keeping each other company. PSG LGD also seems pretty eager after their victory against Evo Genius. Is obviously running with that momentum within the same day. The guy we see in the shot, QQQ, playing an instrumental role in uh, LGD's path to this grand finals. I believe this is the only coach that truly just does the draft for his team, at least in this matchup. I'm not sure across the tournament. Might uh, the, other... Another, other Chinese teams do that. Like oh. Mikasa does it for VG. But yeah, there are not many coaches that yeah. like control full, full control of the draft. They generally are on the sidelines giving input, and of course when it comes to preparation for the matches, go over replays, go over drafting patterns of opponents, but QQQ definitely, when we talk about LGD and we talk about all their players, he's the, truly the sixth man for this team. I think this should be like the, the future though, I think for a team to fully utilize the sixth man and to take the pressure off the other five players, so I think this is going to be a way a lot of teams might be following, you know, in the future. I, I agree with it, because the coaches are not much biased about the drafting compared to the players, so... Yeah, because sometimes when the captain is drafting and the player like uh, tells him, uh, I want to play this this game, you know, there might be some bias of like comf comfort, but the coach is like, no, this hero is not good here. I, I want to pick this hero. So it's probably easier in that sense for the coach to decide that. It that does, hero. I think it's very team specific, though, if that kind of just structure works, because you need to have a lot of faith in your coach in order to just full-on give them complete power over the draft you need to feel like okay even if your coach isn't playing at the same level you are isn't playing as much every day that they understand the game as well as you do and i think that's something pretty unique right now to the chinese team where they give more credit to the coaches in the drafting position or maybe that's saying it the wrong way maybe both teams give even credit to their coaches but they just utilize them in a different way so at least for the first game i feel like they're still, still sticking to the ideas they had in the upper bracket final where they're fo focusing a lot of the bands against the uh, no tail and then on the Uji side they're not really afraid against playing enchantress but one of the heroes they liked playing against enchantress was the silencer and it's been banned out yeah well, that's i think these are the three best bands against no tail you can have in this finals so Full on just targeting him. Yeah. Um, when we were, when I was saying I was expecting some, or this would be a good time to pull out some surprise picks. This is a very standard opening for both teams. But I think when you choose to do your adjustments generally to surprise your opponents, is you throw that curveball on the 18 or on the 22 picks. So the last picks of second and third phase, respectively. I'm curious to see. Obviously, LGD today showed that they're not scared of pulling out something new. But for now, it is very stable and staying true to what I've got them this far. The Shaker is in the game, yep. so Yapsar thinks OG will win this game. <laughs> yeah, there's that prediction. Regardless of what happens. Uh, one thing LGD did against the Shaker when they played OG the last time was that they picked the FY Clockwork, who played an outstanding game. Yes. Uh, he was playing against both of these heroes, as a matter of fact, and we'll see if they, uh, they do grab it again. They did end up losing that game. But FY was exceptionally good. I mean, that was like a perfect Clockwork game. They had Partner, they have Shaker, they have like Bane, they have all these like weak heroes that Clockwork could easily kill. And it speaks oh. a lot about oh, oh. a Storm Spirit. Yeah, Storm Spirit, Storm. second pick. Very early. Wow. Nice. Well, else, if you're Samus and want to play this hero, I think in the series, this is when you got to grab it. The teams are banning it second phase against him. Yeah, and this hero has some similarities with the Clawlet, with how you deal with the Shaker. Because when you're playing against a Shaker, you always want to be able to get to him. You kill him, you need to take him out first, or you, you risk the fact that in the fights, any time a big echo could actually just wipe your entire team off. And Storm is one of the best heroes at doing that. There are a lot of heroes that Thompson is good against with uh, Storm Spirit. Thompson's the heroes that I see from Thompson already is Invoker, which is banned out, and there's Monkey King, and also, don't forget about it, with Skyrim. 
It's yeah. constant since yeah. the crazy with that hero. I haven't seen that hero in this tournament from him yet, but when you see that hero, that's like the just, kind of pick that that is the kind of pick that OG could go for. In this and we did game. see that sure. being banned against OG the last time they met when Storm Spirit was picked. So obviously, PSG LGD well aware of that. We'll see if they use one of their bans for it. There's uh, another reason that Storm is really good against Spectre, in my opinion, is the nature of how teams end up using the map when they have Spectre. It's a lot of this you go together as four, and Spectre plays on the opposite side of the map, joins the fights with Han. But when you have Storm, you have this hero that, when it's missing, feels like it can solo kill the Spectre in any lane. So it, it kind of passively just limits Spectre's ability to find farm, and she has to play very carefully, maybe only farming with Spectral Dagger instead of committing to Creep Waves. And just delaying that timing of Ana could prove to be really important for LGD in this game number one. I mean, adding to that, I think when Spectre is faced to, in that situation, you kind of can't be too greedy with rushing the Radiance. You have to yeah. build like maybe a defensive item that allows uh, you to sort of like semi-survive the ganks and maybe farm a lot more. So I think that would be the adjustment that the Spectre can make this game. Skyrath Mage Ban. Yep, there we go. Comes out once again. PSG LGD very aware of what Thompson is capable of. The last time they also ended up banning up the Monkey King in the last phase as well. So I guess the safe pick for the UG side is maybe the Lina. Lina is pretty good against Enchantress and Storm overall. And because they also had the last pick, right? So it can also be swapped out with Jerax. But yeah. actually Jerax is playing most likely the Earthshaker, right? Yes, I think Jerax will be put on this Earthshaker. And I think what OG will do is they will pick No-Tail, his hero now. Uh, looking for something like perhaps the Bane to come out from him in this situation. A lot of his heroes have been banned. And the reason is, even if Lina is good, I think you want to conceal the mid-pick. You already know the mid-matchup. This Storm will be going mid for Somnus like 99%, unless he's absolutely forced away from the lane. So if you can get a little better read on seeing perhaps one extra core or one key support, it's uh, unless No-Tail sees a fantastic option for him to save his support for later, I do think we will see him grab it now. He doesn't look too confident right now, though. And uh, don't think he expected the storm. No, I think that caught them off guard. You saw Jerax uh, chuckle a little bit when it happened, though. So. <laughs> I mean, they do have like uh, a lot of lockdown for him, so it's not like oh, storm is picked and we don't have really enough stuns to deal with him. And we see in the second phase ban, OG decides to take out the Terrorblade and the Undying. Those are the two heroes that are much much better against the Spectre. So to 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 create a situation where Spectre is the strongest hero in the game. But I also want to, like, the Storm Spirit is a problem as well, but I think it's very important to make Enchantress useless somewhat. Winter Wyvern is, uh, okay. I personally love playing this matchup as Enchantress in lane. I feel like Wyvern doesn't do very much to you. You have the Arctic Burn or the Splinter Blast, but Enchantress's biggest strength as a hero is just... Could it, be, could it be a, like a misleading hero? Like it might it be, be the off lane. Yeah, yeah, it could be an off lane. Right? And uh, we've seen OG done this uh, in the third pick a lot, multiple times. They pick a hero. Wait, you, you look at the hero. This hero is going. Mid. Why are they picking this hero so early? And then it, at the end of the drop, okay, it's not actually a mid hero. <laughs> and you pick the counter towards the lane, and you you get end up in a bad matchup. It's one of OG's uh, special flex picks, I would say. It's only OG and I believe Serenity that ran this in a position three. I think Serenity played on Jin Q. Uh, earlier in the tournament, but yeah, it gives OG more team fight for sure. I personally hate playing Wyvern against Storm. Yes, me it's too. It's a really <laughs> terrible matchup, uh, but perhaps if they do put it in the core role and get some items, it could be able to su survive with something like a Glimmer Cape 4 staff build, but as a position 5 and how No-Till plays for this team, if he does end up playing this Wyvern, I feel like he's going to have a really hard time having a good performance in this game. I have a feeling it's not his hero because so I far... I do as well. Yeah, because so far the way I observe uh, they run the system, Notio has been taking a hero that takes very little amount of farm. So I don't think he will be on the Wyvern, but obviously it's still quite open for but that in the draft. For me, at the same time, I kind of like the Winter Wyvern against the Storm because it is a lockdown. And then you have a follow-up stun with the Earthshaker where you can lock down the Storm Spirit and then resist and then of course, Mr. Wyvern is really bad against Enchantress because the pure damage goes through him, but... If oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Okay, so not leaving it to be banned in the last phase. Securing that. And Winter Wyvern, sorry. Winter Wyvern and then Monkey King being a good, good combo together where Winter Wyvern just uses his curse and then Monkey King can just kind of yeah. go up there and use his uh, ulti, right? Look at their team fights. Insane. They have the Wyvern ult, the Wukong's command, Earthshaker ultimate, and the Spectre ultimate. This game for LGD already, I think when you game plan for this, you identify, okay, we're not going to win 5-on-5 five five fights unless we get the jump. Ideally, we want to dominate the lanes and split up the map, and when OG try to find farm, that's when our Storm Spirit can shine. Because it is very difficult to teamfight into this, but 
Uh, looking at how maybe has been, or Somnus has been playing the Storm Spirit in general, uh, I think this is the kind of game that you don't go Bloodstone in. I think you want a fast Orchid here so you can single out that key target in the Wyvern or the Shaker for now that you just jump, control, and get the first kill on. Because if you go for the greedier Storm Spirit build with the Kaya into Bloodstone, do you actually have the control and the damage to not just get counterplayed way too hard by OG's supports? Yeah, I agree. I, I think they have to kind of like play more conservative. They have to try to, you know, buy items that will allow them to create space to drag the game. That's why they want as a storm. Um, so this Elder Titan is going to buff up a lot of the magic damage that the storm and CM is going to be doing. It does give them some sort of like team fight. It gives them uh, disengage, I would say. that. If there is this curse play into Monkey King ulti, it's really good to... If you can just land this stomp from Elder Titan and just disengage... If OG use their cooldowns and don't find kills, their lineup is actually really weak afterwards. So the first jump and the first move needs to be successful. And maybe this is the logic from LGD here. We can bait out cooldowns, delay the fight. Our Storm Spirit will be able to clean them up one, at one, by, one by one. So kind of like the Naga sleep, essentially. In a way, yes. With that other Titan, what, what, I'm thinking about maybe Void to finish their lineup. I know we've not seen that hero a lot, but Void does work really well with the CM uh, and the ET and on top of things, they have the enchantress to hit outside of the Chronosphere. Uh, it's a hero that I think maybe, uh, sorry, uh, Army has played in the past, and uh, I know he likes playing heroes that are very, very strong in the late game. I generally am not the biggest fan of Void together with Storm. The logic is obviously a Chrono and Storm jumps someone else, but a lot of the times in games you find yourself in this situation where it's a great Chrono and Storm can't follow up. So, at the very least, they would have the Enchantress to deal damage in the Chronosphere, so I think it's still a good enough game for it. But part of the reason we haven't seen Void very much in this tournament is that he is not a very strong laner here. Yeah. He has put very much pressure and has a lot of bad matchups. And you would be picking it blindly here because you still don't know if the Wyvern is a 3 or a 5. And now oh, like they'll get a much safer my, pick. Uh, we'll just line up here. But isn't like all of the, the, uh, the Berserker and the Storm... How's this going? What's the plan here? So they're gonna try to split, because this hero doesn't really provide too much team fight. He's more also like what you said, like they have to try and split up, try to get a pick off here and there. Until he gets a lot more items. So just, he's... just blood reach the storm and have it jump people. It's pretty good. <laughs> so pretty much if you look at their lineup, it's basically all around the storm. They have the CM aura, yeah. they have the ET aura, and the blood rage for the storm. Everything is so that maybe please carry us this game. I mean, picking it that early, it seems like they were kind of committed to them from the get-go, right? They just didn't want to take any risks of losing it. They had a plan. It seems like PSG LGD might be the one that's going in with the game plan they already had for game one, whereas OG is kind of adapting to it as the draft goes on. Bloodseeker has, I would say he has a really good matchup against Spectre because that as a carry is very mobility dependent in fights. If you get the rupture on Spectre or on the Monkey King, both of these targets want to move in fights. As Monkey King, sure, you can drop your ulti and stay in the ring, but if you just stand still and the fight disengages from the ring, you don't really bring much to it. There is a surprise pick. Is that wow. Seb here? Is it Seb? Or I think it's a position 5 for No-Till, but it could be either. Let's see what they do. All right, well, there is the draft. We have all 10 heroes locked in for this game one between PSG, LGD, and OG. We have a couple of surprises coming in. Well, we'll have a chance to hear from one of the coaches. It sounds like Casey's out there, but pass her out. I found him. All right. You got your pick? Yeah, there are four this time. Four this time? Yeah, yes, I wanted one, but uh, he didn't want in the boot, so he tricked me. You've been tricked. Yeah, well, I, he's going to use it later. It's uh, okay. So the draft is fine. I mean, the team is happy with uh, what we picked. Uh, I have no story today because I slept like a few hours. <laughs> well, you've been preparing for a little something we call the grand final, so yeah. Uh, not because of that. I mean, the last two days were like filled with uh, emotions and weird feelings, you know? And we tried to sleep, but at, at least me and Johan, I know for sure because we're in the same room. And it's hard, you know, you try to go to sleep and you just can't, and then it's morning, and then you have to play <laughs> to do stuff, yeah. Are you feeling pretty confident based on the draft we just saw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very confident when all the players, like, agree on the draft and they're, like, happy, because it's, like, it's about teamwork, and even if, let's just say, we we'll, we'll, uh, are a little bit outdrafted, it doesn't matter that, sh that much, because we showed, like, many times that we can come back if we are, like, chill, we do the proper plays, uh, Seb is like, 
making all the team be okay, not to, not to go like emotional and stuff. So yeah, I am confident in them. Good luck. Thanks a lot. We'll Thanks. see. Ladies and gentlemen, both teams are ready for the match. And to bring you the grand finals, it's Oni Pixel, Bob, and Ben Merlini. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here the Dota 2000 International Championships Grand Finals is going to be brought to you by myself, Oni Pixel, Fog. And as everything this year, we're stepping it up. We're making it bigger and better. We've got Ben Wu here, ladies and gentlemen, as we get into game one of OG versus PSG LGD. And lads, we couldn't have hoped for a more perfect draft from both liners. We've got the Sun, the Storm Spirit on one side, and then on the other side, we have OG doing it in their own style. This sort of style, this draft style that we're seeing no one else do here at this international, but it's been working out for them. I'm just happy we have some nice late game drafts that could potentially play out, right? We've got the Storm Spirit on Somnus that can go super late. We've got the Spectre as well. Really looking forward to it. Also, the team fights coming into play. OG has drafted a massive team fight lineup. And yesterday's series was one of the most exciting series I've ever seen. Yeah. And I've watched a lot of TIs. You know, last time I would like Acid, it was with well, it's back at the Boston Major. That's Everyone true. remembers OG versus Abfin. And let's hope we get some games on a similar caliber, and I'm sure we will from what we've seen on the series running up to this one. So, Ben, you've been, been watching a lot of Dota lately? Yes. Caught up? Especially. Yeah. How about with this? Uh, what do you think of this Seb tree and off lane? There are a lot of heroes that we've seen in Seb play. I actually, actually took the world lane. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Oh, what, do you think, what, what is it about the trend you think that Seb sort of sees in it as a hero that, that other teams aren't really at the moment? He plays at a lot of just lane pressure. I don't even, I think the last time we saw him play, he didn't go the Nature's guys. He actually goes for just having uh, the Leech Seed as well as the Living Armor to help his lane. Jerex. Oh, 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 just oh. not quite there. Not going to get it this time, but a good shot there for Jerex. Didn't want to try and lane down the Fisher just in case they were on it and have the micro ready. So right off the bat we see LGD, they want to be able to dodge and adjust away from OG's lane. So they want to save, they want to protect their Bloodseeker in particular and also having against that Spectre and away from the Tree Protector. Same thing in that mid lane. They don't want the Monkey King versus the Storm matchup. So they're putting Chalice there, which is a much better matchup. He can do great versus that Monkey King. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how well Thompson plays it, as you could imagine. This this hero that we know, he plays in all his pubs. He's been bringing it out here time and time again at the International. You can imagine he's probably played his fair share of matchups, so he should be used to the Enchantress, and we'll see how well he can do here, as he has had some incredible games recently on the last couple of days here at the International. Yeah, Monkey King's not the most super popular in the mid lane, but Thompson, you know, he plays all those weird ones, and he plays them just to the point where you can pick it despite it not being top tier. Yeah. Hero that we have not seen win a whole lot though, right Owen? I think me and you saw at least it's, two or three that did not have a good It game. feels, it's one of those hey, heroes that can absolutely sort of crush the mid game, oh, get this insane amount of kills, and indeed Somnus they're going for blocked. the kill. He's blocked in by Jerex's is vicious. Somnus trying to lay down the remnants. Sep's got to be careful. Has to step away to make sure he doesn't get caught out by the stomp. Pretty scary lane for OG up here. The Earthshaker as well trained, just these two melee heroes versus Elder Titan and Storm. They love playing versus melees. If you get into range, you just can get stomped up, and also, of course, that static remnant damage. The train protector might force these cores on LGD to go something different, though. The root against the Enchantress and the Storm Spirit. You don't really want to build the Yules for any sort of dispel, but you might have to versus double root. Yeah, that's a good point. I was, I've seen Kaya, uh, like Somnus, I'm pretty sure I've seen him do the Kaya into Yules build from time to time, but it's pretty rare. It depends on really that matchup. Yeah, I know the panel was talking about him rushing the Orchid, but it might be very dangerous doing that. Yeah. Yeah. We can certainly expect to see it sort of play a different, little differently, as we say, being in the safe lane rather than the mid lane. Something that we have seen a few of the Chinese teams start to do this TI. I really like Sin's point that he was bringing up on the panel, how he was saying, like, you look at OG's draft and it's a lot about just that wombo combo. If LGD are able to disengage once they get to that point, I think it's going to be really important for them in the mid game. Because like, if they throw all their ultis out and LGD just walks out of it, then all of, like, the majority of OG's damage is kind of committed forward there. Do you think a lot of pressure's on this builder type to break up that team fight combo that OG has? Yeah, definitely. Because they, they, they also have some good combo synergy that can come out too. If they do live that, they have like this damage that can just build up more and more to Storm Spirit. If you don't get caught in that initial combo, you can take out all these heroes. You're relying so much on the Earthshaker as well as Tree Protector controlling uh, that storm. Well, so far, looking at all the lanes, no one really falling behind. Seps at the bottom of the CS, but still the big one, certainly that mid lane. As we were, were saying, you, you'd expect the Ench to maybe come out on top, but I think this is just Thompson showing us uh, how well he can play the Monkey King in a, a variety of matchups. As he's leading the CS by, by quite a bit at the moment in that 1v1 mid. Yeah. Haven't seen how much he's spent on yet, though. 
certainly getting harassed much more than Chad is. It's, it's fairly even in net worth, yeah, so he has been bringing out a couple extra, but he's also getting benefited from the living armor. So like we were saying, uh, Seb on the stream protector doesn't go to Nature's guys, he helps oh, on top, that's all connects. They've got the setup, they've got the remnants down, and LGD looking for first blood, they'll find it, FY cleans it up. That turns towards Jerry, he's giving him a quick push as he has to back away, bottom lane at the same time, Ame trying to chase down Big Daddy, he gets the cold embrace off with the use of that mango, Anna stunning the punch into Ame, forcing the Bloodseeker back, Nova with the Nova, can he find it here, Big Daddy Notel goes down, can Anna get the trade, chasing down the CMX, Nova, is he speedy enough, he's running, but the dagger's back up, Anna will find the trade. Does he get the one for one down on the bottom lane? Of course, Anna getting that kill. 17 for three at the moment on the Spectre. He's certainly struggling a little bit, but he's still getting a fair bit out of that bottom lane. He's having to spend extra on regen too. But on both sides there, it's, it's a lot of a spam uh, matchup down in the bottom. They have the Wyvern as well versus that CM. So just constant harassment with spells. Yeah, that's definitely where we're sort of seeing that that slight 1k advantage for LGD, as you say, is the expenditure of the cause of OG on that early spree gen. So do you need to build any items on the enchantress to deal with the crit on the monkey king? Like, the, she doesn't have that much armor in That Jingu is going to hurt really bad. I've seen a lot of enchantresses get almost two shot by monkey kings if they're able to build up the stacks. Yeah, that's a good point. I, the killer gives you a tiny little bit, but I think maybe maybe we could see something just maybe like a medallion, maybe some casual just armor item like that. I feel like sometimes when we see that matchup, like down the line, obviously in the later stages of the game, we can expect like an Eon disc to come out in the Enchantress, yeah. perhaps. Uh, maybe even on a few of these heroes to, to sort of help protect them against that huge physical burst that, that Thompson's going to have later on. I think one of the important things for an Enchantress is, I mean, it's an item that you tend to get a lot in the edge, but versus Monkey King, it's like the best, the Hurricane Pike, because you can actually mess with his interaction with his ulti a lot and just keep that distance away. So it might be some, some type of item rush like that just to keep that distance. We'll see top lane Somnus, 29 for 5 at the moment, against Seb's 17 for 5, so definitely the lane where we're seeing the, the biggest difference between both sides. As they're keeping a good hold of it up top, PSG LGD. They have so much freedom in, the, in this because they have their CM or oh. us, able to spam that scan. Uh, the courier yeah. gank coming in as Thompson, ready to strike, but Somnus and FY, they, as you say, they're, they're backing up. They're keeping it safe behind the tier 1 tower. No tail will show himself mid as he comes in to sap up some of the XP and uh, help with the D push. The Chalice they're, is getting a fair bit of damage onto this tier 1 mid. They're swapping up the lanes. They want to have that Monkey King versus Storm before he hits 6. And Thompson is actually uh, saving skill points, which is kind of cool on the Monkey King. 2-0-2. Two, zero, two. Will choose what he needs to commit for it after oh, his bottom. bottom. Ame's just diving in! And he gets away with it as Anna was all on his lonesome there. No support back up there at the moment, of course, with the movements from OG supports to other lanes. LGD just Whoa. They had that scan, they knew where the Monkey King was going, and then they had a TP, Wyvern, mid, and as soon as they saw that happening, took advantage of it and on a bottom. I don't think they can leave Ana alone like that almost ever. Yeah. It really versus any of the people who have decided to go that and also some weak support, but. One of the dangers of first phasing the spec. Yeah. Definitely gonna get punished oh, in the lane. They're gonna make a go on FY. They've got the Fisher out. Anna and Thompson closing in on him as FY will try and turn. Gets a fair bit of damage out on the Jerax, but not enough to bring him down with it. As FY will fall. But still, overall, PSG LGD just having that sort of lane control across the map. That a little bit stronger as they lead 2k mid lane. Sure, Seb's trying his best to keep this tower alive, but. Each siege is going lower and lower. Top lane, Thompson gets in, is able to punish Somnus. Gets the burst out onto the Sonsbury. We have the rupture on Anna. Anna getting himself away from the tower, but Ame is there ready to chase down and will find Anna in return. Great read by Ame. You already knew that. Oh, and Chalice. Wow. That sort of movement from, from the middle lane to the top lane from Thompson, sure, it did find the kill on, on Somnus at the end of the day, but it, it's really opened up that middle for, for, for Chalice as we're seeing as top Thompson. He has got the Jingu Mastery stacked up, jumps down, the fish is there, he's got the life still, but it's not enough, Arme with the blood right, burst down Thompson, but still back up to hell. They're trying so hard to keep this mid tower alive, they just keep rotating heroes in to make sure that they can keep the living armor going on it, but Chalice really trying to press the issue. Yeah, Seb isn't high enough level despite being the offlaner to really keep this tower line. He did actually go for the third point in living armor, but Enchantress is going to sit there, try and get those wagons up as he can with that Blightstone. It's still pretty healthy, though. As long as they can keep these towers alive, they can certainly play into sort of the hands of the late game Spectre that they do own with Anna. We've seen it time and time before here from OG on the main stage. In games, even where they get fairly far behind in the mid game, as long as they can keep the game going, there's a high chance that the Spectre's going to be able to do some incredible things in the team fights. There's smoke from Wyvern trying to get some boards out, but don't know if he's going to get it broken. Not spotted, but smoke broken.
So the one thing I look at LGD's draft, if we do get to those later stages, they do have good amp damage after FY caught very deep in there. Next is gonna come across and look to help out. He's got the frostbite, holding back Thompson as FY still backs up. Jarex comes in with a TP. Thompson starts to turn towards challenge for the untouchable means he can't go for it. Goes straight for the TP out. He's actually gonna run the faces. He can't get away. They catch out Thompson. Back towards the mid lane, Anna with the horn joining in, looking towards Ame, but Ame, he's too fast with how low OG's members are. Seb getting beaten down by Charles and that's Thirst, what, is, what an ability. Giving you vision on that tree line there, because that specter gets low. And you can see them, they're still trying to fog them, but it's not doing them any, any good at this point. This game's going a little bit too fast, I would say, for OG's pace. They, need, they want more time for the Spectre and the Monkey King to get items, and the tree to just kind of hold off their T1s. At the, at the very least, the T1 is still up for OG. So they are losing heroes, but not their T1s. Yeah, I mean, this, this Bloodseeker and Enchantress are getting oh. away with way too much right now. The Storm, sure, getting sucked down a little bit, but... Those other two are a big problem right now for OG. How are we doing on levels? So we do have a couple level sixes coming online. Pretty much almost all of OG except for Jarax, while on the side of LGD. They do have level two level fives on their support still. We can see for those rotations coming out with all those ults. Nice. Seb will be going for the medium. Oh, man. Ah. The setup on Seb. Leads in with the rupture, Seb. Use the trees he goes, still pretty high on health at the moment. And Fly gets the Echo Stone Pad, the ult from Seb being used to hold back. Ame temporarily, and this is buying time for the rest of Ojas coming. They have no tail from the side. Chalice with the images trying to finish off Seb. The Winter's Curse will hold back the two of them. So no tail, make sure that Seb can get back to safety. We get away from this reaction from LGD. That's two full defensive ulties used by OG though to protect themselves. Is top the pressure on Ana. The wraparound from X Nova, he's got the boss by on Tana. Cancel the top of the damage he's bottle charging up to. He has that extra bit of mana for that extra Again, Ana sort of being caught out in these situations where OG supports her elsewhere. And bottom lane FY goes with the stomp, but Ame's backing off. He knows Jarex is in. Jarex leading him with the fish who tops him. Looking to chase him up with the primal spring. He's got the boundless strike down. Is it enough control to allow the rest of the team to come through? Blood right from Ame trying to push OG away from chasing for the kill. And will be successful as OG back off. Ame will stay safe. LGD is heavily outmaneuvering OG right now. They're splitting them up all over the place. They're making plays on each of the lanes. So it's forcing OG to react, and then it's making Ana very, very weak in this laning phase, unable to really find a place for him to actually catch back up. I do think uh, Nojo has been doing a really good job of being in the right place at the right time to stall these pushes, make sure the T1s don't take that much damage. Yeah, they're still giving up a few kills down there, but I think it could be a lot worse if he were just a few seconds later to each of these engagements. It's a bit of a rassay on to Chalice, unlike the between the two of these heroes, they have the damage to bring him down at the moment. Especially with X Nova around. Jax has got to be careful. Takes a bit of heavy damage there from the Impetus. Does also have Seb in the tree line. They're going to try and set up, but they're walking with the Echo Sun. Do they have the burst? Anna comes in with the Spectral Dagger. Is it enough though? Chalice, he's got the Untouchable. He's it given it to the Vibe. He's in with the ult. They get the kill. X Nova, those three cancel straight away by Jax with the Fisher. X Nova tries to DP up, but OG. gets a kill down bottom on the other Titan. And that lead that LGD had, it's been knocked down by a couple of thousand here. Just a 3k advantage for PSG LGD now after that fight. Chalice feeling himself just a little bit too much there, right? Just walking into it the It looked like he was going to get away. I mean, they did commit pretty heavily for that. Oh. It's definitely worth it at this point. Look at that money. Somnus cleaning up a hefty stack here that's going to give him a big jump towards that Kaya. They've been using that stack actually with FY, you know, the, the Elder Titan that we talked about so much, that's how you really enable that hero in the laning phase, to stack up that hard camp, use it for your spirit, and, and they have the storm to farm it. Thompson's been doing a pretty good job of keeping up the network too, because he's kind of the one that has to run around and make a little bit of space for the Spectre so he can haunt and get some kills, but he's still number two. He's very close to having the, the full Echo Saber done, so he's going to almost be sort of guaranteed to get up the Jingo Mastery stacks in each of the fights and get that burst heal off with the boundless trap. I think, that's just, I think that's just like the best build that you can go on out in the Monkey King. So you can just get involved all the time. All the other builds we've seen, like the, the Battle Fury, it's, just, it's very slow. I mean, that's not the meta at the moment. Especially when you have a Spectre. Yeah, especially with that. So they can chill for a little bit and wait for the ultimates to come up. I would say OG or way more ultimate based. So, you know, you want to fight in those two minute rotations and just use Winter Wyvern and your Trant to stall out those T1s until those ultimates are up. And if they don't want to fight, you're okay with farming because I think you have the better late game right now. 
2 1 mid, pretty much back up to full. The power of the tree and protector. That is, I mean, that was down to like 100 HP yeah. at one point from that five minute wave. From the they five threw minute it out of bodies. Yeah. Worth it. Definitely worth it. That tower is, we say, like the most important tower to defend, especially when you're playing with the Spectre lineup, so you could farm your jungle, have access. CPS here, do you want to make a move up here? They'll scan out in the trees, they know that no tail's in. But he's one of the trickier kills to get with the Arctic Burners. He does start to retreat. Nova looking to come across. But he's already backed by the tier 2 tower. No tail will be fine. As PSGLGD desperate to sort of make a play around here as they have those three observer wards down. You do you see actually as No Tail sort of comes back in actually as the Arctic Burn ends? They're still a very hesitant though. The Winter's Curse out on the side. Jarax. Can he set up onto FY? He's got the Enchant Totem. Chalice is coming in though. OG have to be careful as the Impotence start flying out towards the Earthshaker. Jarex taking a lot of damage here. They try with the Earth Splitter, but it won't quite catch him. The heal there from No Tail with the Cold Embrace, keeping Jarex safe as well. They're just trying to stall these towers as long as possible. But on a bottom hole, sitting as quick as it they find him. Burst down the Spectre before he's able to TP away. At the same time, OG want to make a play down top. They know that they went for the play down bottom PSG LGD, so OG want to punish this. They jump forward, bound the strike, Echo Slam on top of the Enchantress, but Chalice's healing is not enough. The Wukong's command finishes it. He can't now heal that amount of damage. Army has turned up to the fight on the side. Thompson cleans up a second. Double kill for the Monkey King as he finds X Nova on the Crystal Maiden. They have surprisingly good catch on the side of OG. I wasn't able to expect them to get that many kills, but they're really good at sitting here with the Ukon's command. Long tip. Or Somnus. In he goes. On to Jerex. The cold embrace there from No Tail, though. Thompson with the boundless strike, holding back Somnus. They've got the enchant totem. They've got good control for the sleep from F1. Thompson stops him from getting the Kiki Box. He's tagged up Somnus to the side. Looks to Jerex. The fish is down, but No Tail sort of blocked him with F1. There's still going to just happen. Finding one, maybe even more. It's FY. He's been surrounded. The stomp. Sleep onto two. Chiseps coming in as well, though. So FY. He'll have to retreat. PSG can't take this fight for now. Chalice. Well, maybe they can. Chalice has turned up as well on the Enchantress. The Sebolt holding the two of them back. Anna and Jarex backing away. Seb. He's being looked at by Ame and Chalice. He'll go for the TPI in the pit. He'll be safe. And they can't cancel this. They get out. PSG LGD still maintaining the lead. They're trying to chase down Anna. And they're fighting. He, came, he was actually on a warding expedition and just just comes around from the back. All right, they see the line. The line was joined instantly by Jerex. He's like, wait, what the hell's CM doing there? Perfect position indeed for Xnova to find himself in. Topson build wise going for the Maelstrom next, helping him keep up with the farm. That, as we've said earlier, a good job of keeping up with the pace of Somnus and Arme. So they're unable to kind of kill the Monkey King and the Spectre. They just generally get one or the other in these fights. It looks like Thompson is getting there. Ooh, he's trying to get the life shield up. He does get it. Can he find the connection? Somnus is actually out of mana. Thompson walks out of range off the stop. He's turning to Somnus. One more hit will do, but he can't quite get in range. Jeff fights there with the block off. As Thompson won't find the kill onto the storm. He may find it. He's got the boundless strike up in five seconds. Into the tree he goes. Arme is TPing in. Is this John Thompson? He's in. He's, he's going with a boundless strike. The Wukong's the back of a Jarex with the fissure. They're onto Arme. Arme's gone. Thompson with the tree play. As Jarex is still there looking at Oaks Nova. Chalice is coming with the impetus. Thompson in trouble. He's been silenced. He's been surrounded. Sonder sips in with the Vosic. The Winter's Curse is there. Surely they can't keep Thompson alive. They can't. Thompson will fall. Somnus sipping for more. He's got his eyes on No Tail. No Tail tries with the Golden Embrace, but the remnant magical damage is there. PSG LGD get the two of them at the end of the day. They're responding so quickly. They know that OG's draft is just very ulti dependent. They're just keeping the moves going. As soon as those ultis come out, they don't care. They just bring more and more numbers. They know that Ana doesn't want to get involved in too many of these fights. If he doesn't have Haunt up, there's no way he's going to come. So I think Thompson took, made way more out of the situation than he could have. Almost killed Mamie. <laughs> and still, he got a core kill at the end of the day. He did. And they've got the blink on the air shaker. Now, so. So that sort of combos we saw that was already pretty impressive with Jarex just being able to offer the lockdown of the Fisher from outside the Wukong's command. Now he can actually get in there, offer that increased amount of chain stun that will allow time for the Wukong's command and Topson as the Monkey King to get his damage out in the team fights. My slight concern for OG is that they, they don't have the similar, these three cores that are farming. Because you see the train protector, he's actually almost same net worth as the other tank. So it's going to be like Jarex who has to really pull it up and just get a little bit more of that gold for his team. They're we really dependent on the We seen the full strength of their team fight, though. They, they have the root and the Wukong's command. If both of those come out when he has some stacks up, it's going to be really nasty for LGD before they get their PKPs. And they have good ways to set it up, right? They have the Winter's Curse and the Tree and Lulti, so... Right now, it's usually four of them fighting, one of them farming, and then someone else dies. and kind of repeat, but 
sooner or later they're going to have to move up. Well, they're hunting for Anna. X Nova goes for the vision, Somna zips in, the horn will be popped down as out of there, he's jumped over towards the mid lane, but Chalice is there, as well as Arme, the rupture, the impetus, a balance strike comes out, but it won't save him for the blood right, Arme gets the kill on the Spectre, and a down for 30 seconds, OG still hovering around that mid lane. Ana's been incredibly good at finding farm inspectors throughout this tournament, but this game, OGD are even better at shutting Charity. him down. Yeah. He's looking for the setup opportunity. As you drop, Echo. Echo, Fisher, bam, they get Chalice, he's out of the picture. There's the blink dagger reveal from Jarex and he gets a big core kill. Yeah, Chalice has been, has been the punching bag for LGD, but at the same time, Storm, what is he going for? Orchid? He's going for the Orchid after Kaya. Not going for any type of defense, he's just going to depend on his teammates to try to really bail him out of the situations, in particular FY, as the panel had mentioned, for that disengage. But yeah, check. I, want, I wish I could just count all the old teams that Chalice has eaten already in this game. It's only, only 9, 20 minutes in. Yeah, I'm sure they'll switch off once the other cores get BKB. I'm not sure if maybe he's going to get one next, but I would probably think so with his offensive items. He's caught out No-Tail, out in the river, all alone. X over there too, Cold and Graceful by some time, but the old comes out from X Nova. Not messing around with No-Tail. There's some ice on ice action, brings down the Wyvern. Um, he's got a Shadow Blade. He seems to know exactly where, I'm, where uh, Thompson is too. Doesn't have a Quelling Blade Gil though. Oh, he's bought, he bought, bought one. Oh, he's bought it now. He bought, one. he bought one. He's looking for the right oh. tree. There's Thompson. He's going to go for it. They've got the jump. Jarrett's with the control again. Chalice, the punching bag in trouble as the Wukong's command gets the final hit. The Earthsplitter's coming out, but Thompson keeps himself to the side. He has been silenced by the Blood Bright Army. Looking towards him. The rupture down on Thompson as well. Thompson has been living armor. It gives him the chance to turn. Get the Jingo Monster. He stacks up. He hasn't got Boundless Strike there for seven seconds. The Fisher from Jarrett's buying him time. Thompson life stealing up as he hits the creeps. Army with the Shadow Blade. Look at the kill. Sondrius! He's in! Thompson's still alive though! The Winter's Curse on his other back and Thompson gets the life steal, but he still goes down. Thompson will fall! Somnus, still with Madden in the tank, ready to play on Zips across, gets Jarex as well! Now looks towards No-Tail, he's got enough matter for one more remnant, No-Tail turns with the splinter blast and the wraparound for Zip. Looks for the bunch on Somnus, Somnus zips back defensively! They've got the sentry down, Frost Nova, the buyback from Jarex, Anna with the chase down, Somnus, he's used a lot of his mana, the Fisher, the damage from Anna, he's got the dagger out, he looks to Somnus and he finds it, Somnus is gone! No-Tail! They're looking for more. X Nova and charge over Jarex. Holds him in place. One more right click will do it. And the CM falls. Seb goes down as well to Arme. The sleep setup. FY. Stop. They've got the combo. The blood breaks out. And they're surrounded. The damage from Arme. The Fisher. But the force. Tell they get him over. Arme. Still on the chase. Anna. Back to the shrine. Now Thompson's back in the game. Arme's got to be careful. They Fisher's up. In a second, Jarex jumps in. The echo. The echo. The control. And is in on top of Arme. Arme's gone. Chalice up to the high ground. And as he wants to chase, he looks towards it. But he will back off for now. As ladies and gentlemen, OG and PSG LGD here in game one of the grand finals of TI8 certainly making it feel like it. What a buyback from Jarex. Really just kind of saving that situation for them, which is looking kind of bad. Buys back, gets himself some big core kills, at least at the end of that one. Getting both that storm of the Bloodseeker. Although they lost a lot of their support heroes, they kept their they kept their Spectre alive, which is the most important, as Ana is now level 14 for his team. And I forget who was talking about it on the panel, but they're just so good about playing around Thompson, making sure that he gets his Jingu stacks. He was he's been critically low multiple times, but being able to separate them off with a fissure or just lifesteal off creeps and just making sure he gets his Jingu stack before he can actually go into the fight. Look or at even this. just with the, the synergy of the, the yeah. living armor, it yeah. actually makes a big difference. He's able to tank so much with living armor as well as the uh, Wukong Command bonus armor. And it seems like a tough core matchup versus the Bloodseeker. Like the Bloodseeker, you really want to fight a Monkey King. Normally, you're okay with a Blade Mail, but he has Jingu lifesteal to deal with that. And then he also just can press his ultimate. Not run away. Yeah. Doesn't have to worry about at all. And each time saw the backup of the living armor as well from Seb, just giving him sort of those extra yeah. few instances of being attacked to, to allow Seb him the time to build a large kill. Somnus, he's straight in onto Anna. Does he offer the damage on his own to find the kill? Though Anna pretty tanky at the moment. As Anna just turns and Somnus has to zip himself away. Living armor. <laughs> Every single time he's coming out from Seb. I mean, it's it's doing a lot. This train is keeping OG's cause alive against these sort of little pickoffs. And still, PSG they may be 6k ahead, but they're still only taking one tower down at the 23 minute mark. Seb's keeping the rest alive. And Seb's already got his Meteor Hammer finished. He's got his, you know, of course that ulti's gonna be coming out uh, level two soon. So he's got the combo. They've got so many combos on OG if they're able to just sandwich it all together. 
Yeah, they need the BKBs, but at the same time, they still have to deal with two ultimates that go through the BKB and the Monkey King ultimate, which is still going to do a ton of damage. So, LG, I mean, yeah, they do have the gold lead, but BKBs don't mean everything here. Sep, down bottom, just continuing to, to deal with the push by himself. The rest of OG starting to swarm over PSG LGD's half of the map. You have Thompson in the jungle. You've got Ana getting a lot of space up top, putting some pressure, in fact, onto PSG LGD's own tier one tower, which is, is falling very low on this top lane. And he's got his Manta style. This is such an important pickup in this game, just so he doesn't get killed on those split pushers. have to deal with this Frostbite or silences coming out from the Bloodseeker and Storm. Sep. There's three heroes down here at the moment from PSG LGD. He's just spamming every single wave with Meteor Hammer and just yeah. keeping that living armor going on those tier ones. It's taking a lot of resources from PSG LGD down there. And they're not really getting away with what they want to achieve. Ideally, they find a kill, but Seb, he's, he's playing very hidden. They oh. don't seem to have the, the preparations to catch out the tree. Yeah. OG's done just such a miraculous job of keeping these tier ones alive. It's pretty crazy. And they're also scared. Like, at, the, at any time, the monkey could be in the trees on bottom lane. They could set up with a Spectre. And there he goes. So. He's thinking about popping the Blue Cross Command top, and he will. Looks towards X Nova. X Nova caught in the middle of the ring. And it comes over as well to join in the kill. The three of them find one. TPs are coming in. Chalice. And he sets something up with Arme. There's that. Jump. Look at the jump here on the control. Jarek straight in on an Arme. And Arme pops the BKB, but it's too late. Somnus finds No Tail on the side. The buyback's going to be there straight away from No Tail. Somnus zipping across towards Jarek. The all out from the CM, but the Meteor Armor from Seb's coming down. They've got the chain stun onto X Nova. And it's still alive for now. They get the double kill. The cold embrace. Keeping Adder alive. The Winter's Curse holding by the attacks off the Chalice. The Charger is so fly. He'll fall. Triple kill for Adder. Adder. Can he survive? He gets him to the high ground. He's still alive for now. The from Seb, keeping the spec to save Thompson will fall though, dives too deep. Anna wants to find Somnus, pops the Manta style, they get the kill. Ultra it's an kill. ultra kill for Anna, he's still alive. Chalice, he wants this, but can he actually get it? He's got to back off. Anna will TP out. And the definition there of friendship and team play from OG. These sort of saves from No Tails Wyvern, from Seb on the tree and protector, it's, it's incredible. And their preparation too, they already had the sentry down behind the tower. Bloodseeker runs in with that Shadow Blade, gets caught out immediately from that Fissure as well as jumping as Jarek from Jarex. And that was LGD's gameplay. They tried to take down bottom with three heroes versus one. They couldn't do that. They tried to take a team fight mid. They weren't able to pop their BKBs up before the Echo Slam. How do you think they should take the next fight to make sure that they retain their lead, albeit small? Name. He had trouble that last fight getting the BKB off in time with the speed that Jarex pounced upon him. These saves are just so crazy. How I can't believe they didn't go down. They even, BKB even went off too, so it ticks down to 9 seconds now, but these saves just back and forth, be it from the cold embraces, even the curse to protect him in some sub situations. That right there, the overgrowth. Look at Ana. It looks like he's just dead in this situation. The over and, and over about, again. As you said, the combination, the living armor, saving him for those first few rainbows coming in from Chalice, and then the cold embrace. They just couldn't kill him off. My Tree, goodness. Been so annoying for them, though. It really has been. And they also just sat on the root, too, for so long. They weren't able to finish him off. They had the Leaf Seed and the Living Armor and the Cold Embrace on top of it and their urn, which is so many ways to heal. And LGD, I mean, they kind of need a Spirit Vessel, too. It, it really does seem like that. But I don't know who's going to build it. I think it's. Oh. FY almost has it finished. So, so I did have the urn. He does tend to do this from time to time. I think that might actually time. be a bigger deal for the PKBs on their side at this point, considering how much these saves are helping out a team fight. So it looks like PSG LGD will finally be able to find this tier 1 tower down bottom, but OG, they're into the pit, no tail, tanking up the Roshan with the Colin Embrace, and Bloodbright will be thrown out by Arme. I suspect something's up. Jarex just keeping their eyes focused towards that mid lane, throwing down the Fisher, holding back the Kree wave. Roshan's at half health. They've got Elder Titan, they can keep scouting this over and over again with the Blood Rights too, pushing them back. Let's Let's get top's gonna start the fight here, goes for the bounce truck to Arme. The BKB's out from Arme, though, gets himself out of the Wukong's command. Anna with a horn finds X Nova. That's one down, and Arme with this BKB is just having to run himself away from the fight. So now Arme is without the BKB. OG can look to head back in the bit. Jarek still with the Echo Slam. No Tail still with the Winter's Curse. Seb still with the Overgrowth. They have their team fights still ready to go, OG. They're killing this so fast because the man's a death. Chalice all tries for it, but he's not going to get it in. Oh, straight in! They get the two of them, the Slam! Oh, LGD tried to get in there with Somnus, but Jarek was quick with the jump. That was an impossible jump. They even had the Meteor Hammer queued up for when it was about to die, so... Maybe they get the kill, but I don't think they get the Aegis in. They definitely don't get away with their lives.
They have everything. Like, OT still had all their ultis ready. Yeah. And Thompson, he's hunting for more. He knows that Arme doesn't have BKB for 20 seconds. Uh -oh. He's got the dust, he's got the preparation. Jax is in with the fish, they have the control. The enchant totem Arme is gone! Not satisfied with just a Roshan, Thompson quick to hunt for more, getting that kill on Arme. Arme's out of the game for a full minute and he has not got buyback. The teamwork and synergy by OG has been spectacular. It's a show of Thompson and Jarex constantly getting the control over and over again between these two heroes. Whew. Who says you need to go late game with Spectre? 29 True. minutes in, pressuring the base of LGD. On his 12, 7 and 8 on the Spectre. That's a tier 3 tower gone. They're onto the barracks. Somnus holding on to his buyback. He'll be back up in five seconds. FY trying to set something up. Does find the sleep onto the two. Then the cold embrace can be prematurely put down onto the monkey king. They have the earth spray out to do it. Somnus oh zips in the burst. He just rips the monkey king apart. Can he find more? No, he's getting changed. Turns Jarek with the control, but he gets back out. Somnus will survive just for now. The jump. They've got the impetus down. And Jarek's in again with the enchant. Turn of X over. Very low chalice with the play. Looking for Adam with the cold embrace. Keeping Adam safe with the help. Sol this Zip City wants out of the glimmer cape, keeping out alive. Oh, gee, just saving one another and getting away with his pushes until now. Arme, he'll come in with the TP. He's looking to hunt down Anna. Anna has the living armor, goes for the TP out. He's gonna make it. There's no way that Arme can cancel that as Anna gets out of there again. The Winter's Curse from Notel being used to hold back the disablers of LGD. Notel, he will pay with his life, but he did his job. He got Anna out of there. These living armors <laughs> every time. Just seems to be making such a big difference in every fight. There's not enough damage also coming out from throughout the cold embrace. Thought the impetus would be enough, but with that alone. The hero creep. <laughs> Slowly but surely doing it. It's not doing it. Actually, not doing five He's doing less regen. damage than the region. <laughs> He's doing a little bit more damage than the region. But it's going to take a long time. The creeps will spawn. And goodbye, oh, hero creep. Oh, thanks, Nova. Looking to get some information as he goes in deep with the Invis rune. OG, they're sending a mid, they've, again, their ults are up, they've got the Wukong's command, they've got the slam, they've got the horn. Four siege creeps in the mid lane. He's gotta run them away. But that's their best tower push, and they yeah. still haven't done any damage to this Full HP. Well, this could be really big for the future setups too. OG actually still has a base that LGD does not know about. And they've still got that Aegis on Ana, of course, with that save play being made. They can certainly look to try and push again. Five seconds until No Tail's back in the game on the Winter Wyvern. Killing the Spectre is seeming to be almost impossible now for LGD. It, once he gets a heart on top of this too, he's got the 500 health talent from level 20. I don't know how they bring this man down. They're going to have to use everything onto the Spectre. And it's going to give so much freedom for Thompson in the fights, as well as Jarex. Haven't really been feeling the impact of this Bloodseeker dude. He's been, he was doing pretty well in the first 10 minutes, especially with the thirst, but... He has BKB and he's still useless. He's number two on that work, but he feels like he's like number six. He can't get into the yeah. fights, right? Like versus Monkey King, versus the yeah. Victor Wyvern, versus the Earthshaker as well. There's just too many things for him to actually deal with on this Bloodseeker. I saw him zips in, trying to clean out the creeps, but the creeps are going to be able to keep themselves alive for now. They'll jump in, Thompson with the BKB that we've got to buy. The Fisher on top of Chalice. Chalice is gone for 70 seconds, and he went full in on the Aghanim's purchase. He does not have money for buyback. Zipping from Somnus, looking to get himself on top of the Spectre. Can he finish up this kill? The Adder, he's going to be kept alive, the urn heal is fine, the Winter's Curse holding back Somnus, the dagger's out onto Somnus, Somnus has to zip back towards the base, Arme tries to go forward, but Jarek, in with the counter play, jumps in, Echoes out, the barrel is strike for Thompson, they take down Arme, Arme buys back with the melee racks, they're already taken down in this middle lane by OG, they've got the FY sleep set up into the blood, right Anna, with the Manta style, he's fine, more than fine as he gets out, will start to be healed up by that urn, still has the Aegis, as OG now with a 5k lead and a melee racks up. And add a heart now to that Aegis. Oh yeah. They do, they do not have enough damage because they have to build these defensive items. I mean, I guess maybe hasn't really, but Bloodseeker, there's no way to kill him. Maybe if he turned that into a Silver Edge, or you know, maybe had a Halberd to deal with this Monkey King, but there's, there's just, BKB just actually feels it's but one of those games if you do, man, if you don't. Yeah, there's just, there's just too much control and team fight on the side of OG. And they're just way too tanky right now for LGD. Yeah, and if you're trying to go for pickoffs, you never really know where the tree is and the Spectre can haunt in, so they're also really scared to go down that route to try and take this victory. Yeah, they've got like, it's just so many different forms of initiation on the side of OG that LGD, their, their initiation is that the Storm has to run in, try to start the fight, and then Ame, poor Ame, tries to run with the BKB, but there's just crazy amount of control that goes through it. So maybe with this Manta style, he can try to play around it a little bit better once he finishes this on the Bloodseeker. Shalos looks like he's eyeing for a Lotus Olympics. Do you like this choice? 
Oh, Thompson. Can reflect a decent amount of spells and also remove the spells himself, but... Finds F Y. they pop the odd as well, X-Nova's gonna TP in! That's the gem! They just got the gem, too. And they're buying back on FY. PSG LGD desperately want to try and take this fight somehow. They know Thompson's Wukong's command is about to wear off. He'll jump himself out to the side. He's back up to the trees. There's the Winter's Curse. Holding back the two of the manas in. They're ready to fight this OG despite PSG LGD being the ones buying back into it. Jarek's in with the stun control. They'll burst down Arme. Arme's down for 90 seconds. Chalice is dropping as well as the orb from Anna comes out. Splitting LGD apart. Anna into the trees. Looks towards FY. Steps back to avoid the Echo Storm. Chalice still being chased down by Thompson. One more swipe will do it again. Chalice, they get FY, and Somnus and X-Nova just left to try and pull the creep wave away. It'll zip across, but Jarax with the Echo Slam. The Orchid comes out onto the Shaker, they're trying for the return, but the self fuels keeps Jarax alive. He's safe. Somnus trying to run. Fisher, Boundless, trying to, they have the damage in time, they do! Oh, gee! Again and again and again in this game one! Pulling off this, these incredible plays, and G, G is cold, ladies and gentlemen. OG taking game one of this best of five in the 2018 International Grand Finals. What teamwork by OG. Every little thing coming together. This, the Earthshaker and the Monkey King, just, just the control coming between them and just the way that they were able to stall the